don't think so. Uh, I, I think at the end of the day, you will need to diversify both your investment sources as well as your markets, right? And what I think should, we should be doing is obviously uh, deepening what I call the regional value chain, which will include China, but it will probably uh, hopefully diversify not just having China as dominant uh, be there. And China is also, you know, you're seeing an outward flow of investment from China as well as from companies who are diversifying the China plus one yeah. strategy. Yeah. So for Indonesia, what we need to do is to, be, to do two things, I think. One is to be attractive as an investment location, both for this diversification, but I think there's also new areas where the U.S. would still be important, mm -hmm. like renewable energy, like the low carbon technologies, where you would want to still have the engagement with the U.S. and uh, Europe, both for markets mm -hmm. as well as the technologies. That's and the second thing we have yeah. to do is international cooperation and in deepening our uh, regional integration as well as continuing to, like we are negotiating with the EU, uh, an EU-Indonesia uh, comprehensive economic partnership agreement. So yeah. we need to continue to engage and balance. Engage and balance. Uh, so far, the, the, most of the recent investment in nickel and mining in Indonesia has come from the Chinese. And I want to take a pause here and play you a soundbite uh, from Tim Bush over at UBS and take a listen to what he had to say about this. Most of the world's nickel supply growth is coming from Indonesia. And um, the U.S. is a, a nickel battery market. Um, unfortunately, Indonesia does not have a free trade agreement with the U.S., which means that um, there's going to be restrictions on Indonesian supply into the U.S. I think what we would hope for with a change in administration is um, a limited critical mineral agreement between the U.S. and Indonesia, similar to what we saw with Japan. Most of the, the Indonesian nickel assets are controlled by uh, Chinese interests, yeah. and many of these interests the U.S. government is defining as foreign entity of concern, mm -hmm. therefore off-limits for IRA incentives. So Tim Bush there from uh, UBS, and he, what he was basically saying is in order to diversify, one of the first things he thinks uh, any new government is going to have to do is start talking to the U.S. again about a critical minerals agreement as well as potentially an FTA between the U.S. and Indonesia, because right now nickel and the U.S. is shut out of that market. What do you think? Uh, I think so. We have actually been continuing our discussions uh, to get a limited minerals uh, agreement with the U.S. because, as I said earlier, uh, for us to be competitive in the further downstreaming from nickel, such as EV batteries, you need the global market. So you need the U.S. and also the EU. So a limited minerals uh, free trade agreement is actually we have been trying. Now, it hasn't been easy, and uh, I think we need to, be, to have a plan B as well. Yeah. So plan A is to get a limited minerals agreement, but mm -hmm. we have to also understand probably one of the requirements is that you cannot have an export ban on your nickel as part of that agreement, right? Yeah. Uh, we have to be co co uh, cognizant of that. Uh, the plan B would be deepening your regional value chains so that you reduce the amount of Chinese uh, or uh, foreign entity of concern within that supply chain. What does that mean? You know, we, if you want to make EV batteries, we have nickel, but we don't have lithium. Mm -hmm. Australia has lithium. Uh, Malaysia has uh, also uh, rare earths. So you could think about a regional value chain uh, which may still have a Chinese element in there, but the definition of uh, entity of concern is 25% ownership. So you could diversify the, the investments within the region to have a regional value chain which supplies the region as well as globally, right? And some of them also have FTAs with the U.S., Korea, uh, as well as Singapore. So I'm, okay. I'm talking about Plan B. Yeah. Re deepen your regional value chains, which will benefit the region, but also uh, allow you to engage with the U.S. How are these neighbors, including, let's say, Thailand, also Malaysia, how are they feeling about this whole idea? Uh, Australia, uh, we have been talking to Australia about this. Uh, we haven't really talked to the Fi Philippines. is another country which has a minerals agreement. But in the last ASEAN meeting, there was talk about uh, like an uh, EV ecosystem of ASEAN, right? Oh. It's still early days. Yeah. Uh, you can sort of flash uh, flashback 
30 years ago when we were talking about us, uh, the automotive agreement yeah. within ASEAN. Each one was competing with each other. So we need to, because right now everybody's competing in the EV uh, space as well. Mm. Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, mm. we're competing. So we need to find a way where we can uh, actually uh, be complementary and, and really deepen the, value, the, the regional value chain. So you need scale yeah. for, for yeah. you to be competitive uh, yeah. in this area. Understood. Yeah. Fascinating. Ibu, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. Always appreciated. And I see you just voted. You came, you came from voting? Excellent. Number Good one stuff. voter in my area. There you go. Fantastic. <laughs> area. Thank you so much for your time. Great okay. to see you this morning. Um, Ibu Mari Pangestu there, Indonesia's former trade minister, as our coverage here in Jakarta continues. Back to you.